Thank you. Greetings, Vice Chancellor, Professor Manche Tipake. Thank you for inviting me. Greetings to the member of council that's here with us and uh, to the rest of the academic staff, uh, Professor D Dini, Professor Lewis, and your faculty members. I'd also like to greet everyone here, family members who are here to support the guardians today. Most importantly, I'd like to greet, uh, to say congratulations to all the graduates. Today is your day. Unfortunately for you, you have to listen to one more speech before, <laughs> before you get your graduation, and uh, they chose me. Um, so who am I? My name is Mavo. I'll use a, a popular and current cultural reference of House Solomon, the first of his name. <laughs> I'm the breaker of educational chains and the singer of societal pains. I'm glad some of you understand that. Winter is here. It's been an incredible last two weeks. Um, some MIT student finally figured out how to take a picture of some black hole trillions of light years away. Um, initially, I thought I was coming to speak to engineering graduates because I was told it's the EBE graduation. I didn't realize I was speaking to the other half, which is the built environment, but I'm happy I am. <laughs> I'm sure some of you are probably touched by what's happening in France, architectural students, and so forth. Um, when the opera singers were singing, uh, I kind of felt moved for France in that regard. 800 years old building down in flames. Okay, so I've introduced myself. I am no Mark Shuttleworth, even though I was here when he was selling his company, Quart Consulting, to a company called Verisign. And Mark pocketed 3.6 billion rands that year. That was the year 1999, my final year here at UCT in mechanical engineering. I, was, I am two years younger than Mark. Even now, I still think about it. Mark, in 1999, had 3.6 billion rands. We've since diverged. Mark made, makes his money. I've chosen not to make money, <laughs> uh, which is an interesting lifestyle. So I'll tell you more about that, and hopefully you get some inspiration from it. So I've watched a lot of YouTube videos for commencement speeches in the, in the US. And I've watched some UCT ones. Uh, the worst thing I want to do is read my entire speech to you. So I'll try and keep it short so that I don't lose your attention span. So my time at UCT wasn't as glamorous as it should have been, as I was not necessarily an academic, academic trailblazer, even though I already had a Bachelor of Science degree with majors in mathematics and physics from Vista University. I was 21. 21 is, is an amazing age. Most of you won't believe it. But at 21, Einstein developed some interesting thinking in, in terms of uh, special relativity. It took him another four years to develop his general relativity. So by 25, he had come up with what we now use as our theoretical understanding for gravity even though in high school we teach Newtonian gravity. But they meet at some point, so it's okay. So the last time I was in this room, it was not called Sarah Bartman. It was called Jameson Hall. That was 2000, June 23. And as I was being admitted to the Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering, not with honors or first class honors, as some of you are going to get today, just plain bland degree. In fact, I dropped a point out of the 144 that I needed to complete my degree successfully. I had tallied 143. The statistical probabilities of that outcome still amaze me. <laughs> so I didn't want to come back a whole semester to do a three credit course so I can get one, one credit to, to graduate in June of 2000. So I spoke to the head of department then, Professor Grisagoridis, who's Brazilian. And he was not sympathetic, not that, not that I wanted him to do anything for my self-inflicted wound, 
but I came up with a bright idea to do a, a non-engineering course, which is allowed in engineering. So I went and I registered for sociology, the best one month of my life. <laughs> a whole year course compressed into one month, four weeks of intense lectures with all the miscreants from this university who decided that they're gonna spend their whole year just playing and not studying hard to finish their coursework. But it's the best time of my life at UCT precisely because it moved me away from engineering, which was mechanical engineering especially, which was solely boys and men. We had two girls in our class, and 80% of the time they tried to look like, look like men, so they, did, they don't stick out. So here I was in sociology, doing sociology, and girls in my class, and for the first time, I was having debates that I was not used to. Everything in engineering, architecture, construction, whatever, relies on a formula. This time I had to use arguments. I had to have solid arguments, construct them well, listen other people out, which was the most valuable lesson for me at UCT for my whole academic life, in fact, up until that point. So I finished my studies here. I did well in sociology and I went off to work at Kuburg. If you don't know where Kuburg is, it's about 45 or 40 k's from here. It's a nuclear power station, so I know you Cape Townians like your Cape Town, but if Kuburg goes down, we're throwing all the rocks on the mountains, you can't get out, huh? We're keeping, we're keeping you here. So I worked at Kuburg for two months. I only lasted two months, and I came back to UCD to do a master's at the Energy Research Center. My supervisor then was Professor Kevin Bennett. Kevin, we called him Cuddles. He was a big chubby fella, he is. You always wanted to kind of cuddle him or hug him. And I had great support from his deputy director at the time, Mark Howes, who was a PhD student, who is now a professor at some Swedish university. I can't remember the name, but I keep in touch with him. But my studies here, I spent some time in Germany for two months in Stuttgart, uh, yeah. So you don't want to go to Germany if your country is a slow country, right? So I learned a lot in Germany. I was, I was proud of their work ethic. And I felt a little bit sad for, for South Africa. I know, I know you sit here at UCT, you think most of South Africa is like this. It's not, okay? It's not like UCT. You're gonna find out soon enough and it will be humbling. So I did my master's in energy planning as uh, Loretta indicated. What does that mean? I was one of the guys responsible for developing the engineering mathematical model for the planning of building of power plants, timiest building of power plants. <laughs> 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 Refineries and so forth. By 2003, we already knew 2008 would be an energy crunch. The integrated energy plan identified that something needs to be done by 2005, but no one listens to engineers. Oh, engineers are very really bad communicators. And I'd like to believe also you architects, construction management guys, urban city planners. I don't see a lot of urban city planning outside of Cape Town. So I don't know where you guys go when you're done. So we're very really bad communicators in terms of communicating what needs to be done. That's a valuable lesson I learned as an engineer that it's not enough to know how to do the work. You must influence the people who are going to make the decision for the work to be done. You know the power outages, what do they call it, the blackouts. And that's a result of us not being able to communicate to then President Awambeke and his minister Alec Irwin of the urgency of maybe disbanding or suspending uh, privatization or deregulation until we've built power plants that uh, will supply us with enough electricity. Of course now they're still talking about deregulation. You are purportedly the fourth industrial revolution generation. I was thinking about it the other day when I was here my first year at UCT I taught myself how to type using a typing tutor which I downloaded from Netscape, you don't know what Netscape is. It was a browser then, it was the most popular browser at the time, especially on, at UCT. 
So you are the fourth in the industrial revolution generation. Do not allow yourself, unlike us, do not allow yourselves to be mesmerized by technology at the expense of human lives and the environment. So yeah, that's me and engineering. I've taken some time off. Don't know for how long. Hopefully longer than 10 years. It's my counting. It's my sixth year now since I left engineering. And um, <clears throat> so I'm, I'm going around the villages in the Eastern Cape teaching mathematics, some physical sciences, physics and chemistry. I also teach some computer programming, which is ironic because when I did my first BSc, a professor of computer science came to me and asked me to register for computer science. He won't believe what I told him. I said to him, no, prof, I would like to stick to the things I know. That was 1993, my first year at university, and I, make the, I made the silliest decision of my life, not to do computer science. Of course, the internet was coming in 1995, and I was there at GCT when all of this took over, and Mark Shuttleworth was one of the beneficiaries of the internet. But I've cried enough tears for that, so I'm trying to prepare the rest of South Africa for, for the eventuality of the fourth industrial revolution. So why do I do this? Why do I do, go around teaching mathematics to kids who sometimes seem like they don't see the value of learning mathematics? So I do this because it's necessary. So if, the, if, if there's anything I've learned, with all the money that I made as, as an ESCOM employee, as a TBSA employee, UCT employee, UCT doesn't pay very well, so I can't say, <laughs> can't say I made a lot of money here, but even private consulting. I did some private consulting in Switzerland. All the money I made from that, it's not nice going back to home to the Eastern Cape and seeing potholes and mudslides and no internet. No internet in 2019. So that's why I do it. I'm kind of hoping to move the next generation to work harder than we did and excel and improve uh, the province and the rest of the provinces in the country. So I do this to flush out these pupils, these students, these learners who wish to be more than what their living environment makes it seem possible to achieve. So in this journey of mine, I've encountered some talent, amazing bright sparks, as Loretta had mentioned. I'd like to mention just two of them here at UCT. Anatima Zamisa is doing mechatronics since his second year this year. He did very well, got 100% for mathematics, 100% for physical sciences in high school. <laughs> He's from the dusty streets of Queenstown. Shumela Mkunyelwa, also a 2017 matriculant. He, she was an online student of mine. I also teach using WhatsApp, Facebook, Twitter. That's where I met Professor Mkhet. Mkhet. Um, so Shumela is doing medicine, it's her second year at UCT. Uh, she's very good, and I hope she succeeds and becomes the doctor that the Eastern Cape needs. There's lots of other students as well that I won't mention, I won't mention today. The work is tiring, but it's highly rewarding. I would uh, quit my job anytime to do it all over again. So I hope some of you graduates will reach out to me or to similar programs that you're not aware of. I know you haven't been doing a lot of that here at GCT. Some of you might have been through Troco, but uh, a lot of us don't give back to the communities that need it. So I hope you start your own programs, you associate with our program, and lots of other programs. Okay, that's the last page. I know you're sitting there thinking, oh, this guy. He said the, he said the best parts already. So, in my mind, I'm thinking that inequality must fall. You guys did very well in your campaign, and your roads must fall and fees must fall movement. Of course, I mean, a lot can be said about some of your tactics, some of the university's tactics, tactics and so forth, but you did more than we ever did from 1995. While the euphoria of this nation that survived apartheid 
and has a functional economy is beginning to die off, you need to stand up and be counted and do the things you've done in ECT to fight for, in, fight against injustice. You must fight for it outside this campus. Our educational system is a mess, and I speak firsthand as someone who's involved with the Department of Education in the Eastern Cape. It's hard to believe that schools are more interested in enrollment numbers than they are in the quality of what's being taught at their institutions, especially in high school. So in your movement, your fees must form movement, you must make sure those youngsters in those remote villages. What I do is not romantic. I stay in the villages. I use the pit pit latrines. I mean, I'm talking to people who can sort this out. The universities, I can sort it out with the will, with the money, with the backing. Pit latrines, no roads. I have an Audi A4, it's 13 years old. It's broken down. It's not an Audi anymore. I don't know what it is. Rocky streets, Rocky Mountain streets there, there's, there's nothing, there's no infrastructure whatsoever. You must make your way there and see what you can do. It's low hanging fruit, there's very little that you can do to improve the lives tenfold there. And you have the know-how, the means is certainly there. If you wanna talk to me, talk to me. I know some people. Please find yourself a copy of an online article. This is, this is gonna sound like way out there, but I'm going to say it, an online article called The Soft Bigotry of Low Expectations. The Soft Bigotry of Low Expectations and its role in maintaining white supremacy through mathematics education. It's an article written by some scholars in the US for the American condition, but I think there are some parallels here in South Africa which are startling to me. Yes, the majority of public schools in the townships and villages are also dysfunctional. And uh, we're going to have to be um, innovative in a way to rescue those kids from that malady. I have faith in you as a generation and that you, you have the will and the ability to fight inequality. You've, de- you've demonstrated it and, I've, and we appreciate it more than we ever have. This is your next fight and I think you can and you shall win it and you must go for it. Winter may be here. Did you catch that? Winter may be here, but something tells me you will survive it. Uh, in, the, in the spirit of what's happening in Notre Dame, Notre, Notre Dame I wanted to say Dracaris, but I'm not sure if I should. <laughs> but Dracaris, thank you. <laughs>